They couldn't find out what was wrong. Why does his skin look like that? My baby was on fentanyl. I love you. Oh. I've been missing you. He was diagnosed with sepsis, pneumonia, and an MSSA staph and anemia because they were doing so much blood work on him. It's literally almost been a month since I've put anything out on YouTube. The last video was actually a day in the life as a stay-at-home mom with a newborn and a four-year-old. And soon after that, Lincoln um, had a really hard time like sleeping that night and he's a very good sleeper. He was only seven weeks at the time and he was just like, I thought he was gassy and he kept making these grunting sounds. throughout that day I did everything that I could that I knew to do for gas pains in a baby or like a newborn nothing was helping my son he was unconsolable by the, that night of all day me trying to help him I was like okay something's up he's not himself I called my husband he was still at work and I said I want to take Link to the emergency room because something's not right. I just want to get him checked out, you know, and I just thought it was gas. Like they would do something to help with the gas. Well, anyways, um, we were debating whether or not to take him, what hospital to take him to. And I said, let's just take him to children's. Well, the closest children's hospital to us is like about an hour and a half away. So we did it. We took him to children's hospital. As soon as we got there, they did a, they did labs on him. They did a urinalysis, so they had to give him a catheter to get the urine. Um, and they did, they did a CT scan. They did um, an ultrasound of his belly to check for any bowel obstruction. They uh, also did an X-ray and. Um, they couldn't find out what was wrong. So his labs came back and his CRP, which is C-reactive protein levels, were a little high. And that shows signs of inflammation in the body. So the doctor said they wanted to admit him for 24 hours just to make sure that everything was okay and watch that CRP level. I am currently at Children's Hospital. We took Lincoln because he wasn't feeling good and now we have been admitted. I did not expect this. Stefano had to go home. He's okay, they just wanted to monitor him. But I'm so scared he's going to pick up something. They're admitting everyone right now. It's RSV season. Link, I think, has a stomach bug, they're saying. I'm not okay. I'm trying to be okay. I'm gonna be okay, but I'm not okay. There's Link. This is my super fancy bed. They found me a phone charger, which was so awesome. And the nurse is so sweet. She hooked me up. Milk bags. A breast pump. And cleaning supplies for the pump. They're going to get me some food. Stuff for Link. 
And then this is the bathroom. It's 4.30 in the morning. I haven't slept in two days. My mom took Lexi, so Lexi's spending the night with my mom. She's never spent the night at my mom's house before. I just really hope that we're not here long because I was not expecting this. And I hope Link's gonna be okay. He's gonna be okay. They just wanted to monitor him because like his stomach was hurting and because he's so small. I mean, by so small, he's just a newborn. I really want to brush my teeth. That's all I wanted. I actually need somebody to tell me that he's not going to pick up something from being here and that everything's going to be okay. admitted into a room I think at like two in the morning and it was so chaotic I had like a group of nurses come in the room they were evaluating him the doctors were talking to me about him they were asking me all the questions that they asked in the ER just trying to figure out what was going on and what was wrong with him and he was like I said unconsolable he was just crying he was unhappy um, and it was a total nightmare I got one hour of sleep. I don't even think I got that much, actually. I have no contact lens solution or my glasses, so every time I blink, my contacts are moving. Link feels really warm, and I just am sad. I want it to be better. I want to go home. Okay, but like, I'm really excited about this smoothie. <laughs> this is some French toast and bacon and a muffin and some syrup. Bone apple tea. Why does his skin look like that? Lincoln had developed a fever and his CRP levels were going up and his procalcitonin levels were also going up and your procalcitonin checks for sepsis in the body. He was at a very high chance of going into septic shock. Um, so that was absolutely terrifying. They could not find what was wrong. Day. It is 9.30 at night. My parents came. And my brother came. And they visited with us for a little bit and checked in on Link. And he started doing better. And um, he took some Tylenol. And I think that's why. And some... Um, what's the word? I haven't slept in three days pretty much at this point. So... I'm struggling, but I'm pulling from any energy source that I have, which I think is all God, and um, I'm just doing my best. 
he's not doing any better right now. He's doing worse and his fever's worse, so pray. One of the doctors there came in, took a look at Link, and Stefano was back. He came back the next morning of us being admitted. Well, the next day, I guess I should say, not really morning. But um, she wanted to do a spinal tap on him because she wanted to check him for meningitis. And when she said that, I swear my soul left my body because I know how serious meningitis is. Um especially in a newborn. Well, um, they tried to do a spinal tap on him and they were unsuccessful because he was severely dehydrated. And then they tried to give him an IV and they were again unsuccessful because he was severely dehydrated. So they said they were gonna have to wait, um, but the next morning, they told me they wanted to um, have the PICU team come down and take a look at Lincoln because they thought he needed a closer care and to be monitored closer and that he was too sick for them to help him um, on the main floor. There's no, no way to explain what I was going through as a new mom. Like I had just started getting in a kind of routine again. Like I was doing good. I had like a routine going for me, Lincoln and Lexi. And then all of this kind of erupted and just uprooted me. Um, and I was absolutely terrified. Link, by the time we got up to the PICU, they had so many different things going on with Link. They were taking so much blood from him. Um, it was ridiculous. But they were doing what they needed to do. But I was so scared. So once they got him upstairs, they were able to do a successful spinal tap. Um, and they ju we just had to wait on the results for that because the cultures had to grow in order to see if it was meningitis or what. But at the time they were treating him for meningitis just in case and for sepsis. So they were treating him with four different antibiotics. They said it was kind of like shotgun antibiotics because they weren't sure what it was, but they wanted to kill whatever it was. Um, so my little tiny baby was hooked up to all kinds of stuff. Um, shortly after we were in the PICU, they wanted to go ahead and go through with a PIC line. So they put a PIC line in 
and um, so that way he could get the strong antibiotics and them go to his heart instead of travel all over the body and his veins aren't big enough because he's so small. So they put in a pick line. They had an IV in his foot. They had a rectal probe in him to check his temperature constantly. They had electrodes all over his chest to monitor him. And every single day they were doing x-rays and being in the PICU, they did everything in the room. It was very rare that you would leave your room. So they would bring an x-ray machine into the PICU. They would bring the ultrasound machine into the PICU. And they would do that pretty much every morning around four or five in the morning. There was no sleep for me. Now it's time for an update. Now that I don't really have anybody in the room um, we are in the pediatric ICU they are treating Lincoln for um, non-culture sepsis um, there's there's a lot going on and they're testing him for like everything oh you feel taken let's see I'm sure he will soon since he realizes Lincoln. it's milk you Oh, wait, 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 wait a, a scalp minute. first. Wait it's a like, minute. oh, this is the good stuff. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't oh. get it in fast <laughs> enough. Dang. He's such a sweet baby. And he's doing it when he's sleeping. Oh, he's waking up. It's, it's, it's like, what am I doing? It's, it's not a dream, buddy. It's not a dream. It's the real deal. <laughs> He's gonna be smiling yeah. like he was last night. It's like, what is your head doing way over the hair? <laughs> I missed you. I missed my silly girl. <laughs> I want to do it again. Watch. <laughs> Link got a new toy and he really likes it a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> So we have another thing we need to buy on the list. His pick line failed eventually and they needed to give him a new pick line because there was a clot, which was so scary also. And so they needed to do some more procedures. So they just decided to do them all at the same time. Well, they wanted to give him a chest, a chest tube because they found a lot of fluid in his chest cavity and um, they finally found out that he was, he was diagnosed with MSSA staph. But MSSA staph is not MRSA. Everybody kept thinking I was saying MRSA. He did not have MRSA. He had MSSA. Well, it developed all of these pockets in his chest wall and the antibiotics could not get to the pockets. The pockets needed to be broken down. So they had to put in a chest tube to drain these pockets. And then they had to put in a medicine called TPA to break up these pockets. And TPA could also cause bleeding, which was very serious as well. So there were so many different things going on to my son. Um, but before they did that they needed to put him on a ventilator because he could not um this is hard for me to talk about now because with all of these procedures and the medication and needing to put him in under him under anesthesia 
there's a high chance that he would not be able to breathe on his own and they didn't want to risk it because he was so small. So they put him on a ventilator. Um, he had a chest tube. They had a pick line put in and um, they put another IV in his foot because the other one failed, like his veins, it stopped working. Um, what else did they do? Oh, and they put a, they gave him a feeding tube. So one, one day, which was the absolute worst day for me is whenever they put him on the ventilator, he had four different procedures done. And that was the first time that he left the ICU to go have a procedure done. He went into internal radiology and the radiologist did all of that. Lincoln, I love you, Bubba. I know. You're not comfy. I know, Bubba. Yeah. I love you. I love you so much. And you're going to do so good. You're going to have good, good dreams. I love you. I love you so much. baby was now on fentanyl um, for pain and sleeping medicine. It was called Versed. So now he, my, my baby was on fentanyl. That was absolutely terrifying as well. I had so many questions and the doctors and nurses there were so helpful and they always asked do you have any questions they were coming in every five minutes and when i say that i was not sleeping i was not sleeping like the door just stayed open in that room i got walked in in the bathroom like i don't know five plus times uh, i was sleeping on a little hospital couch thing and sometimes I would share that couch with Stefano the chair was not decent enough to sleep in so we were really rough in it my whole entire family and this was the first time I had ever been away from Luxie and she was not allowed in the ICU um, for her protection because you know there's so much stuff going on in the ICU there's critical cases and she could pick up something from being in there so um anyone under the age of 10 is not allowed in the icu so i wasn't able to see luxy and um the reason that i'm able to talk about this right now is because it's over this is why i didn't post anything because i was in fight or flight like i don't think that i i don't i really haven't even fully accepted what happened still um but even the doctors were saying I was at high risk for postpartum depression because I was still so newly postpartum and dealing with all of this. He was your eyes open. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> what? I've been missing you. I've been trying not to bother you. And I'm so proud of you. Okay. And I'm going to need to move some of the... He had to undergo another procedure, too, because um, his chest tube, they needed to move it up a little bit because it wasn't breaking up all of the pockets. And he was diagnosed with pneumonia as well. So at that point, when we were in the PICU, he was diagnosed with sepsis, pneumonia, and an MSSA staff 
and anemia because they were doing so much blood work on him. He needed a blood transfusion. This was Link going back for his second chest tube. Um, after that, there was pretty much just rest for a few days for him. There was nothing really that we could do as his parents. We just had to step back and let the nurses and doctors do their thing as we had been doing. But there wasn't really much progress that we could see other than his labs. And that was kind of scary. So we just had to trust God in this moment. I found so much comfort in the hospital chapel. I know you can talk to God anywhere, but I met with him here almost every day. He is the reason why Lincoln made it through this. If you get anything from this video, just know any of your struggles you can take to God and he will help you through them. This really showed me that because this whole situation is a true miracle. It really is. It's just so freaking scary to think about what could have happened, but it didn't. And I truly believe that the power of prayer is what healed my son because they did not, I, the odds were not in our favor. He was so little, undergoing so many big, big things for his tiny body. I have no idea how it happened. Might be able to hang it up over there. Another head hung it up. He's like, mm -hmm. you're gonna go nice and slow. And I'll get that out of the rest. A boo. Oh no. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning, my Lincoln. Good morning to you. Yeah. Good morning, Link. Good morning. Link is doing so much better. He had his breathing tube removed two days ago. And he, um, the same night he went off of oxygen by 11 p.m. He still has a um, feeding tube in his nose and a pick line for his antibiotics. He has a chest tube to drain all the fluid 
um, in his chest and all of his monitors are still on his feet and he has a um, an IV in his leg as well for like the thicker things that they need to give him because they don't want to put it in his pick line and possibly like clog it up um, but he's doing so much better and I feel so extremely blessed because it has been a very long, scary, traumatic process going through all of this. So now we are just kind of like on the mend and recovering and hopefully there will be no additional hiccups. And I'm really hoping that he'll have his chest tube removed today or tomorrow. And then I think they're gonna move us out of the ICU um, in a couple of days. But we will for sure have to stay here for another week so that way he can get his IV antibiotics. That's at least a week. Um, and then depending on the clinical side of it, how he's doing, um, he, we may get released and he may continue his antibiotics orally at home or we may have to stay. But either way it goes, um, he's doing better and that's all I can ask for as a mom because it's been um, a lot. But yeah, we have so many people that are super, so supportive and um and i just feel so incredibly blessed this has been the worst thing that i've ever gone through in my whole entire life but the amount of people that have stepped up and done things for us is incredible so we're very very blessed and i'm so happy he's doing better we're about to go down for link swallow study do you want to go get some milk buddy are you hungry yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm going to try to give you a really quick tour of our picky room. So when you first walk in, there are a bunch of different types of gloves on the wall. And then in that cabinet, there are some gowns and masks. So that way the nurses and doctors can gown up before they come in. That is a computer on the side of the wall that kind of flips down. And then there is oxygen and suction and things like that on the wall here. And the monitors are actually a lot bigger in the PICU than on the main floor. Lincoln is in a hospital crib, so all of the railings go up and they go down. He was in the same crib the entire time we were here. They just transport him in that crib. Um, and then on the side of the wall, that is a sharps container. And then they just kind of empty that periodically. This is the bathroom. And so this room is actually a normal hospital room that has been kind of converted into an ICU room. But this is not normally what an ICU room looks like, according to the nurses. This location is building a new um, ICU. So this will look a lot different in I think 2024 but hopefully I will never get to witness that the whole time I was here I had cold water I did not have a warm shower um so that sucked there was something wrong with the water I don't know how they were giving their patients warm showers but I definitely did not get any of any warm water at all there's a board on the wall that kind of tells us um lincoln's care team for the day and what the plan of action is for that day there's a breast pump that i used almost the whole time i was there because lincoln was not eating so they were just storing my breast milk as if it was medication so i had to label it accordingly there's also a dresser in there that unlocks and locks depending on who is in the room and it has like syringes and things like that in it. That is the hospital couch slash bed that I slept on. It was so uncomfortable, but I am so glad that I was actually able to stay with Lincoln. Um, and then there's a chair right there that also sucked to sleep in, but it is what it is. There's the hospital room. I love you. You love me. We're all happy. Family with a great big hug and a kiss from me to you. <gasps> Won't you say you love me too? Peace out, pick you.
They're going to remove your chest tube today, buddy. No more chest tube. Okay, bye-bye. No more chest tube. No more chest tube, Blinky. No more. All gone. Yeah. I'm holding my baby. No strings. No strings attached. Wait. Wait. Tell me. Tell me about it. Tell me. Uh, yeah. What else? You've got some hairs up there. It's not even picking it up on my camera because they're so fine. Daddy gave Baker's man. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. Roll it and pat it and mark it with the B. And put it in the oven for my family. Oh, don't touch that. Mm. I'm teaching my brother how to smile. Today is September 9th, and the doctor said that more than likely we can go home tomorrow. I'm ecstatic. We have been here since August 24th. I don't even know how many days that is, but for sure, I think we've been here for 16 days now. So I'm very excited to go home. I don't know what it's going to be like to be home and I'm so pale. <laughs> Link is too. I can't wait to go outside and Link is going to have some boobies for the first time in a couple of hours in so long since he, let's see, it's been so long, like it's been well over two weeks, which is a lot in the span of his life. He's only eight weeks old. Yeah, right, buddy. I'm so incredibly happy that we're gonna go home. He's too busy looking at Pops. I oh, got his attention. No, not no, really. Not He's really. still looking at me. He said I can see those at any time. I just got the news that we're going home today. His CRP levels are back down in normal range. And we have to wait for the doctor to give a report, for him to get antibiotics, and for him to get his pick line out, and then we can go home. Hey, Lincoln. Link. Linky, we get to go home today. We get to go home today, buddy. We're gonna go home. We wanna go see Sissy and Daddy and go play with your toys. I wanna go home and be with my whole family. Yeah. 
we are now home and Lincoln is happy and healthy. He will have a repeat chest x-ray in about a month and we'll need to see ENT. But other than that, everything looks great and he's doing great. In the time that we were at the hospital, we were there for 17 days. Lincoln had 221 different things done to him, tests, and I am so grateful for children's doctors, nurses, and staff. They were all wonderful to us, and they really took care of Link, and I honestly just couldn't be more grateful, and I really do feel like this was a true miracle. There are so many things that happened, and it was so hard for me to put everything in a 40 minute video, but that's the best that I could do. But honestly, this whole situation was a true miracle and I am so grateful to God that my son is okay. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much if you prayed for our family. I really appreciate it and I hope I can get back to making my lighthearted, fun, informational videos again soon. See you next time.